Uh, thanks for joining us. Obviously, it'd be great to get some cricket going. So we're all pretty much looking forward to that in, in the cricket fraternity. Uh, as you know, as Cole suggested, we've uh, named a white ball squad of, of 18 players um, to play the T20s and ODI games against India, which uh, should be very exciting, uh, we hope, and we, we certainly think it will be. So uh, with that, happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, we'll go to Andrew Menzel. Yeah, g'day, Trevor. Uh, just um, on Cameron Green's inclusion in the squad, obviously very exciting. What role do you sort of see him filling within the team? Yeah, look, Cameron's. Uh, you're quite right in pointing out he's a very exciting uh, young prospect uh, for us, and his form has dictated uh, that he be included uh, in this uh, in this Australian squad. Um, I understand in the next couple of rounds of Shield cricket, he will be able to bowl some overs. So that'll be very important for us as well. Um, to have a, another batting all-rounder type available and an option to us will be outstanding. But uh, uh, at the moment, whether he, he uh, gets the opportunity to play or not, that's, that's irrelevant right now. We'll address that when the time comes. But just to have him in and around the Australian uh, cricket team set up will be very good for him and for his future. Thank you. Peter Lawler. Uh, hi, Fred. Um, have you got an eye on him uh, as a test candidate too? I would have struck me that he's pro probably more suited to the long form of the game than the short. But yeah, as I suggested, um, we've had our eye on him you know, for some time now, of course, and, and with his ability to be able to bowl a few overs for us, of course, he'll, he'll uh, come into contention for test match selection or at least uh, inclusion in our our squad, and of course, like our one-day squad, we can we can assume that our test match squad will be um, probably a little bit bigger than normal. So um, he will certainly come into contention for that. Andrew McGlashan. Um Thanks, Cole. Um, hi, Trevor. Just one more on, on Cam and, and kind of the bowling side of it. Um, have you seen enough that you think he would be a genuine top order contender? Whether he can bowl a considerable number of overs. I mean, we all hope he will be back bowling, but have you seen enough that he could be a, a top six batter anyway? He's certainly putting forward a good case to be considered in, in that area as well. Just on some of the logistics around this squad, um, the white ball squad then leading into the red ball sector and red and pink ball sector of the, of the summit, Will is there any flexibility or have you considered at all any of the uh, test players in this squad coming out and potentially playing that first warm-up game that is, is that came out on the schedule yesterday at, at Dremoyne, or do you think that will, they'll be purely focused on the second of the two warm-up matches? Yeah, no, no, good question. Um, now that the, the schedule's out and about, we'll, we'll be addressing all of that in, in the coming weeks. But, you know, Australia A generally is utilised as our next best. However, uh, in the circumstances that currently exist, it may well be that uh, some of our, our test match players or those that are in the test match squad may well be included uh, in that first game in particular. And just one more I can have you with, the, with your selector hat on. Are you comfortable? Do you think there'd be a chance at some point during this summer, given the restrictions that are still in place, that you, you may not always be able to name what you might consider to be a best 11 when you've got maybe player welfare issues or just juggling different squads? Yeah, uh, once again, uh, that's something that, that comes with managing our players. Uh, you've hit the nail on the head there, particularly those that will have been away from their, their families for a long time, uh, whether it be in England, whether it be, you know, straight to the IPL and then straight into test matches or one day games here. So. We're very mindful of that. We're very mindful of managing our players and trying at some stage somehow to get them some time at home with their families. Um, of course, test match cricket is very, very, very important. So there may be other times or other areas where we can uh, give our players that play every format in particular uh, a little bit of a break. Thanks, Trevor. Lockie McCurdy. Hey Trevor, um, Moses Enriquez is back into the squad, I think about after a four year absence from the Australian side. Can you just give us a bit of a background as to why he was selected for the squad? 
yeah, look, Moses has seen and has been seen for a long time as a very, very good cricketer. And, and you probably won't mind me saying this, but possibly has not done himself justice in the past uh, in, when he's been given the opportunity to play for Australia. Uh, right now, he's in, in red-hot form. We saw what he could do uh, in T20 cricket in particular last year when uh, with the Sydney Sixers, his form there was outstanding. He's a very experienced cricketer and, and someone who who could well, you know, be, be seen as, as a senior member of this squad and somewhat of a, a leader around the group. And then just one of the omissions uh, from that squad that went to England is Nathan Lyon. Um, is it the case of maybe because it's a smaller squad, him not being needed, or maybe him wanting to focus on red ball heading into the Test Series? Yeah, definitely from our, our side of the fence, it's, it's a little bit of both. Uh, of course, we did have to prune the squad that, that went to England. I think there was 21 or 22 players there. We're down to 18. And with, with Adam Zamper and Ashton Agar performing very, very well in, in white ball cricket, um, we, can, we considered that, of course, they deserve to be uh, chosen. And, and, of course, Nathan has been left out. Uh, as far as his preparation goes coming into the Test Match Series, look, he knows what he can do. We'll be addressing all that with him and putting, putting together a program for him in the coming weeks. Thanks, Trevor. Ben Horn. Hey, Trevor. Um, just back on Cameron Green and... Um, you know, just the way he's emerging, and as you said, he's you know he, he's now in Test contention. Um, does that sort of put pressure on someone like Matthew Wade, for example? Um, you know, there hasn't been Test cricket this year, and uh, he's he's just coming into his first Shield game tomorrow. You know, you know, does does Cameron's presence put pressure on someone like him? No, it's, you know, and, and any comments around that are not meant to put pressure on on anybody at all. Um, what we will find, however, as I suggested, is the opportunity will be there to have an enlarged squad just because of the circumstances surrounding uh, the virus and all that sort of thing. So, so there's every chance that, that he uh, or Cameron uh, will certainly be an option to be included in that squad. But that doesn't mean there's pressure on anybody else at the moment because our test match side has performed very, very well. Uh, it's pretty stable. Uh, so I, I don't envisage uh, too much pressure being exerted on, on any of the incumbents immediately. And just on, um, just on Cameron's bowling, um, you know, I, I guess the one-day format gives you a bit of a chance to sort of manage that because, he, you know, he'd be restricted in how many overs he bowls there. But um, would you need to be satisfied that, you know, he is kind of bowling at full capacity before he, he would be selected in a test match scenario? Not, not necessarily. Um, it's always very handy to have, have some top order players that, that can bowl. Batting all round is a, a like gold. But uh, at the moment, once again, as previously suggested, his batting alone uh, is holding him in pretty good stead at the moment. If you have a look at his, his record, particularly in the long form of the game. Thank you. Adam Burnett. Hey, Trevor. Just with regards to those uh, Aussie tour games, you mentioned you'll be looking at them differently this time around, given the circumstances. I was wondering, um, Smith, Warner, Cummins, Hazelwood, are they the sort of guys who you would like to see uh, potentially play in those games, given their limited, obviously, opportunities with the red ball this year? We'll be addressing that in due course, and, and we'll obviously be talking to our, our players uh, about all of that sort of thing. But... The, the fellows you've just mentioned are uh, potentially all format players. So um, once they return from the IPL and they get through their quarantine, uh, I think it'll be uh, probably prudent for them to start preparing for red ball cricket. Uh, that may or may not be in the Australia A game and more than likely won't be. More than likely won't be, did you say? Correct. And uh, just on that Australia A game as well, do you um, do you envisage that almost being a, a mini selection trial at all? No, not not really. Uh, I think our Test match lineup, uh, once again as suggested before, is pretty stable at the moment. Uh, our Test team has performed very very well over the last twelve months, so that's that's fairly stable. It'll be more about a any inclusion. Anybody that's in our Test squad that is included in that game will be more about some red ball practice for them.
Great, thanks. And last one from me, you mentioned in a large test squad, do, do you know sort of what number, how many players will be included in that test squad at this point? At the moment, we're, we're looking at around about 17, give or take one, or one here and one there. Thank you. Tim Hipsley. Hey, Trevor. Um, yeah, my question was kind of answered just then, but in regards to the, um, the test squad and, and using Cameron Green as an example, um, is there a fear that his inclusion might be a bit detrimental um, to his progress in terms of if he's not actually getting games, um, he'll be sitting around not doing anything and it will be harder given the current landscape that he'll be able to go back to state cricket play a bit of games then come back in and can you take us through that thought process yeah sure look there's no state cricket there won't be any state cricket that will be affected the big bash will certainly be on so there obviously will be uh games missed there although we will once again as we do each year uh we'll have a look at any players that we may be able to release uh to big bash cricket um but we do that on case by case basis each year, and I think there's a history of that happening in the past. But what what about this current? I mean, it's it's a different summer, um, and it'll be harder for someone like um, Cameron Green or fringe other fringe players yeah. to come in and out of the bubble. Is that the case? Uh, it will be will be harder definitely. Um, but team management, etc., are certainly working through that and seeing what we we can and can't do. Are there any, um, in terms of team measures, and um, can you elaborate on anything that you're able to um, navigate and how you're navigating your way through that? No, not, not really at this stage. Okay, thanks. Uh, we'll go to Andrew Wu. Yeah, good night, Trevor. Um, you mentioned before about how uh, your, your multiple format players, um, how you want to give them a bit of time off to spend with families when they uh, get, um, get back from IPL and quarantine. I mean, are, are you considering um, resting, say, uh, Steve Smith, Dave Warner, Pat Cummins, um, Josh Hazelwood from any of those white ball games at the um, start of the season against India to give them that time? Yeah, once again, that's something that will be addressed in the coming weeks and, and obviously we'll uh, be having discussions with those players and to see a, how they're feeling, of course, because, you know, their, their health and well-being uh, in particular is priority number one at this stage. And, and we want to do whatever we can, of course, to get the best out of them for the Test Match Series. Would you expect... Um I guess their sensitivities with um, uh, what's happening with, I suppose, Channel 7 and they, they would, or rather Fox, would, the TV would rather see them um, rather see them play. Is that also, I suppose, a consideration you, you've got to take into account? Yeah, we, we obviously take everything in, into account. Um, however, as I suggest, their, their health and well, well-being is, is, is a priority for us. Thanks. Uh, we'll go to Seven Brizzy. I'm not sure who that is uh, for Seven Brizzy, but uh, if you have a question. Uh, hey, Cole, Ben Davis. G'day, Trevor. How are you going? Hi, um, just, I guess, following on the same sort of vein as what Tim was talking about earlier, um, releasing players back into Big Bash and trying to get as much cricket because, yeah, you're going to have extended squads with players not doing much um, if they aren't playing. Would you see or can you see a bubble transfer like if for between big bash and 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 the international team would you like to see that where players can move in and out of those bubbles is that a possibility yeah i i'm not sure whether it's possible at the moment or not because as we know things are changing all the time so it, it's quite a difficult one to answer that one but uh it, it would be ideal uh however at the moment we're not nothing's ideal so we've just got to go with the flow work on things as they crop up Beautiful. We'll go to uh, Barat. Uh, uh, Trevor, just just a little more on Pat Cummins and Josh uh, Hazelwood. Uh, they're coming here from the IPL. Uh, do you think there's enough time for them to just get into the get enough like red ball workload in before they play that first test? With just from a physical point of view. Yeah, look, I, I'm I'm sure the support staff and what have you are, are all across that, and, and they'll be monitoring their workloads and what have you, and, and making sure uh, that their their work is is cranked up and they're they're ready to go for the first test match. 
Uh, and, and just uh, look at, you spoke about the test squad has a very uh, settled look to it. But do you see going forward a place for an all-rounder? There's so much talk of Cam Green and Mitch Marsh is out injured now, but he comes back. But do you even see the need for an all-rounder really? Yeah, well, it'll come down to, once again, player management because, uh, you know, the, the test matches are pretty hot in each other's heels. So it, it'll come down to how how our fast bowlers, uh, you know, top-line fast bowlers are, are going, uh, whether conditions, um, particularly, you know, Sydney comes to mind, whether we need to play two spinners, out-and-out -out spinners. And then, then, of course, your all-rounder or your batting all-rounder becomes very val valuable to you. But... Uh, at the moment, I can't preempt whether a all-rounder uh, will play during the Test match series, but it's always handy in our mind to have someone available like that within the squad. Thanks so much. Okay, we'll go to Justin Chadwick. I think that he looks like uh, Justin. You're the last one, unless anyone else has a late question. Justin. Yeah, no, Trevor. I just thought I'd continue with the Cameron Green theme that we've got mm -hmm. going. Uh, how much control does CA have over how much he'll bowl in? in potentially the next two Shield matches and, and what do you expect in terms of his bowling loads there? Yeah, well, as a player of interest, and he has been on our radar for a while, uh, the Australian um, medicos and what have you, keep an eye on him as well as working with uh, and through their counterparts in Western Australia. So uh, between them, they've, they've all devised his recovery program and it appears now that he, he is ready to bowl again. Won't be a lot of overs. It'll be gradual, gradual, gradual. But, you know, as a batting all rounder, you don't need too many overs out, out of these guys. So, you know, if, if he can gradually build up a number of overs he can bowl, he'll be doing fine. So in terms of the next match, what's the kind of ballpark fee? Do you think if you can get through four or five overs or something as small as that? Yeah, that'd be, that'd, that'd be terrific. You know, from coming from where he's been, hasn't bowled in a game for a long, long time and having uh, stress fractures in his back, uh, that would be a nice start. And earlier on, you touched on that it would just be good for him to be part of this squad, let alone play any games. But no doubt you guys would be pretty keen to see him in action. How many games do you think he'll, he'll play during these? Um, I can't preempt any, anything on anybody, how many games they will play. But, but yes, it would certainly be nice to see him uh, out on the field playing for, for Australia. Um, it'll do, it'll be a great experience for him if that happens and great exposure for him as well because uh, it's all about exposing the, these young guys to international cricket so that they then understand what the standard is like and whether they uh, need to continue to get better, which we ask our players to do all the time, of course, but at least it's a barometer for them. Cool, thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Justin. We'll, um, we've got one more here. We'll finish off with uh, Benny Horn. Uh, Trevor, just on a different note, um, you've got Pat Cummins as your vice captain, as you did in the last series as well. Um, is it a concern at all? You know, I mean, I'm not suggesting that you know, anything's happening to Tim Payne or Aaron Finch anytime soon, but um, just in terms of preparing leaders for the future, is, is it a concern that someone like Pat can't get any experience actually captaining a side, you know, like his state side and uh, I realise there's not much he can do about that, given he's always playing for Australia. But, yeah, does that concern you that guys like him, it's, it's hard for them to actually get captaincy experience? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. And, yes, it, yes, it is a little bit difficult. Uh, but Pat's a, a, a natural leader himself. You know, he sets the, sets the standard and people follow. Uh, and as a vice captain, the, the role is a little bit different. You know, he's got to be the captain's right-hand man. So he should be learning from the, from the captain all the time. But you're right, it is a bit difficult. You would like to see somebody uh, like that probably have some captaincy experience, but it's not necessarily um, a must in my view.